The broadcast is now starting. Testing, All testing, attendees microphone. are in listen-only mode. Testing, microphone test. Looks like my microphone is working. Let me double check. I'm going to check the audio on my speakers. And hopefully everybody that's attending is able to see and hear me. So on the right side, looks like we have a couple of people with us. I'm opening up the chat window on the right side of the screen, and I'm just going to make sure that everybody can hear me. Uh, testing audio. Can everyone hear me? So again, your microphones are probably muted on this presentation. I just want to make sure that you are getting audio. So on the right side of the screen, if you have the option to chat, see if you have that. And if you can hear me, uh, just put in a message. Yeah. Testing, testing. All right, I think the real tech. Microphone test. Microphone test. One, two, one, two. Can anybody hear me? Uh, testing the microphone. I have a feeling nobody can hear me. Microphone test. Can anybody hear me? Hopefully somebody can hear me. My computer says I have audio, but I don't know for certain unless I can get a response. So if you're able to hear me on the right side, there should be a little chat button. And you should just be able to just send a quick note to say, yes, you can hear me. No, you can't hear me. So audio test. Can anybody hear me? Nothing yet. All right, try this one. All right, I'm trying a new cable. Audio test, can anybody hear me? On the right side, if you can hear me, go ahead and just type in a quick chat message, yes or no. I'm gonna do a sound check. I have a feeling the microphone's not picking up. Test, can anybody hear me? Testing, can anybody hear me? This is Noah from Shortcuts. I'm trying a new audio cable, and I want to see if anybody can hear me. Testing, testing. I wonder if there's some sort of bad cable there. I'll try it one more time. Microphone test. Microphone test. Can anybody hear me? This is Noah with Shortcuts. I have the presentation this morning. Hmm. Okay. It looks like we are getting audio. All right. Uh, thanks, Rosanna. So hopefully there weren't too many clips there. So I'm going to start this presentation. So I'll bring up our PowerPoint, and then we're going to do a few live actual examples of what we're going to cover today. So hopefully everybody has their coffee with them. This is going to be a, a pretty quick review, So because we know the holiday seasons are just around the corner. So we want to make sure that you're ready to be up and running. So I'll put it on full screen, and this is being recorded, so in case you're late to attend, don't worry. We do. We will post this a little bit later today. So, thanks for attending. So today, we're actually going to be talking about holiday email campaigns. Again, this is the busiest time of the season, not just for retailers, but also for the service industry. This is where you're going to be booked from now until the end of the year. So you, your staff, we want to make sure that you're still in connection with your customers, that you're still letting them know 
if there's an opening, if there's a change in schedule, if there's some sort of promotion that you're working on, that you're prepared. And the best way to do that is to actually reach out via email because you can queue up every one of your email campaigns, whether through the season you're sending out a monthly campaign or a bi-weekly campaign. So you can have all of your emails ready to go so that you can focus on your clients, focus on the customers that are in the chairs and that you're just dealing with that and not having to worry about what your campaigns are about. So with that in mind, just like our other presentations, and let me see if I can minimize this. So for my site, my audio is turned on. Everybody has been automatically muted, but on the right side of the screen, you do have a chat window. You do have a question window. If anything comes up, let me know, send me a question or mark your questions on the right side, and I'll get to that. Also, there is some time at the end of the presentation in case you have follow-up questions. So make sure your speakers are turned on. This is being recorded so that we'll also be able to share it for anybody that comes in late. And of course, if you have any follow-up questions or if you want to see when our next presentations, our next webinars are, you can be sure to follow us on Facebook at Shortcuts USA. So what are we going to talk about today? So we've got a few learning outcomes. The first, since we're talking about email, it's not just emails that you need to focus on. You need to focus on what you're going to do with your shortcuts point of sale. So you have to configure a few things just for the season. If you're doing some sort of promotion, some sort of special event, we want to make sure that we create discount reasons specific for the holidays. If you're running a promotion, we actually have an example of just one of the types of promotions you can use shortcuts for. The nice thing about setting up a promotion in shortcuts is you can tell shortcuts what are the specifics of this event, of this promotion, if it's a service or if it's a product, and if it's only during a certain season or a few weeks. Shortcuts will remember what are the details, what are the specifics, and it'll automatically turn that promotion on and off when the time runs up. And of course, one of the things I mentioned before we started our presentation is when you're looking at your email campaigns, you don't want to set up the email campaign the day before or even the week of your particular event. You want to have all of your emails ready to go. Preferably, if you have a chance, work on your emails this week and have your campaigns ready to go for the next few weeks. So let's actually dig in. So the bare minimum. If you're going to do a holiday email blast to all of your customers, the least amount of information you want them to know is, are you extending your holiday hours? And we're not just looking at Thanksgiving or Christmas. If there are any other seasonal events that you want to cover, are you closed for certain days? Are you extending your hours for certain days? Let your customers know that. That's one of the most important things. That's one of the things that you can end up losing business for is if your customers don't realize, hey, I'm actually going to be open half a day on Thanksgiving. So there's that last chance that they can get a haircut for a party or some sort of business event. The other thing is some of your staff members are going to be taking breaks over the holidays. So you want to let their preferred customers know that they will be unavailable. So they need to reschedule right away with somebody else. The other thing you want to do is if you're sending an email blast and perhaps you're going to have a special on leader duo packs or some sort of holiday gift basket that you're putting together, you want to make sure that you have a corresponding discount in the actual shortcuts point of sale. So we're actually going to bring up shortcuts right now. So let me get out of PowerPoint for a second and bring up shortcuts. So in this scenario, before we even put together our email campaign, there's two places where you can affect your schedule. So on the right side, at the very bottom, we're in shortcuts point of sale, and we're going to set up configuration. And once we're in configuration, 
on the left side of the screen, at the bottom, we're going to go to the General button. And once we're in General, we're going to go to the Business button. So in this case, we have, let me see if I can hide this. There we go. So we have our normal business hours. So in the case of our pretend shortcuts haircut salon, we're 10 to 5, 10 to 6, most every day. But this information actually synchronizes online. So if you're using online booking through shortcuts and you're going to have a change in your schedule, you're going to extend your hours, for example, you want to make sure that you make a change here. And in a few minutes, this will actually synchronize online. So normally during the, the holidays, I actually am open an extra couple of hours. So I'll say, no, nope, I'm actually going to be open for the next few weeks until 8 o'clock. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and even Friday. So in a few minutes, this will actually show up online as my hours have been extended. So when I put together my email and I let them know from the middle of November until the end of December, I'm extending hours every weekday. This is where I'll make that change. So this is one possible place where you can already start making changes and prepare for the holidays. But let's say the business was not going to be open any extra hours. So I'm going to reset it and say, well, my business is still 10 to 6 normal hours. However, I will have, oops, I will have some employees that are available either earlier or are going to stay later just for the holidays because they plan on taking a vacation near the end of the month. So they want to get in their hours now. So what we'll do instead is we'll go to setup on the right side and to the employees button. So normally this is the window that you would go to when you want to adjust your employee schedule. So we're looking at Andy right now. And his hours are pretty much the same as the business hours. But if I look at everybody's schedule and some of my team members say, I'm going to come in a little bit earlier or I'm going to stay a little bit later for the next few weeks, whatever hours we adjust for them will also be recognized online. So even if my salon is normally only open from 10 to 6 o'clock, if Brad or George or Matt or Julia or Andy say they're actually going to start at 9 or some of them are going to stay as late as 9. When you adjust their schedule here, this will also be recognized online. So for the case of Brad, he's going to start an hour earlier every day of the week. So I'll go in here and I'll adjust his schedule. So one extra hour for Brad. And for George, he's actually going to stay an hour later. So because I'm doing this, if a customer were to go online and they were to try to schedule an appointment with Brad or George, Shortcuts will actually allow them to schedule their appointment either an hour earlier or a couple of hours later based on what the employee schedule is. So even though normally the business is not open yet, Shortcuts will allow them to book with Brad specifically because he is available at that time. So remember, two places when you're adjusting your schedules for the holidays. The first is under configuration, general, and business. And this is specifically for your business hours. The other is if your staff is extending their hours for the holidays, you want to go to your employee and your schedule. So those are two very important things. The other thing that's important is when you're making your email announcement, let's say, again, you're going to do a special a promotion on gift baskets or leader duo packs. So you want to make sure that there's some sort of discount reason for that. So if you forget how to get to the discounts, Again, we're under the setup button. We're under the configuration button. 
And on the left side of the screen, there is a button that says Discounts. It actually looks like a sun. When you go to this Discounts button, you might have your standard discounts, your birthday discounts, your complimentary, some sort of special. But in this case, I'm going to create a new discount. So I have these leader duels that I'm going to be advertising throughout the holidays, and I'm going to offer customers $5 off this pack. So since I do not have this discount yet, I'm going to create it. So at the bottom of the screen, I'll press new and I'll call it my leader duo discount. And I'll press done. So I'll say my default is not a percentage. Instead, it's a fixed amount. And the fixed amount is $5. Now, to make sure that customers don't get this discount on services, there is a checkbox in the middle of the screen. This discount is not available on services. This discount is also not available on gift certificates. This can only be used for products. And I can put in a description just to remind the staff a discount should be applied to leader duo packs from November through December. Now, let's say I forget or my staff forgets that this promotion is only going to run from November through December. If you notice on the right side, there's actually an option to set an expiration date. So if I press the button that says no date set, then I will remind shortcuts that on January 1st, 2019, this discount will expire. So the next time the staff member goes to it in the new year, they will no longer see this Leader Duo discount. So keep this in mind. If you're planning any sort of discount or any sort of special when you're putting together your email campaign. So I'll save this. And we'll jump back to our PowerPoint. So again, this is the bare minimum. If you're putting together an email blast for your customers, let them know, are you changing your holiday schedule, whether it's the business or the staff? And don't forget to create a discount in shortcuts if you're advertising some sort of product special for the holidays. So the second thing you have to consider is you have to look past Black Friday. So historically, that is the start of the busiest shopping season of the year. But Black Friday is not is no longer the most important holiday, especially if you don't get a chance to actually go to a physical store or a physical salon to do your shopping. So there are all of these smaller events that have started to take precedence, especially Cyber Monday, where most customers will go online and buy certificates or buy products or buy anything else for their friends and family. So depending on how you want to compose your email campaign, you do not have to create something for each of these events. Maybe you'll create one for Black Friday, or maybe you'll create a special for Cyber Monday, but think about your community. Think about your area. So small business Saturday. So Black Friday, historically is reserved for your, your soft goods shopping, things like that. But Small Business Saturday is where your local patrons will actually show up and spend money in your salon, in your spa. So you might want to announce that after customers have started shopping for friends and family, that they want to support their local business, and you're going to reward them. Maybe on Small Business Saturday, you're going to offer them 5 or 10% off your products. That's a really nice announcement. And then when the next week rolls over, Cyber Monday, are you going to be offering any sort of special or any sort of promotion online? So if you have shortcuts, especially if you're in the United States and you have My Local Salon, you have the ability to create an online promotion 
in my local salon. So you can tell shortcuts on Monday, and I believe it's going to be November 26th, if I recall correctly, that you're going to offer, let's say, a color service, perhaps a balayage, an ombre, and that'll be 15% off on that Monday only if they book online. So with my local salon, that actual promotion will appear on that page. And any customer that books that specific service on that Monday will receive a benefit, will receive a discount. Now, the fourth one. So Giving Tuesday, this is probably the newest of the seasonal events. Giving Tuesday is actually a chance for the salon, for the spa, for the barber shop to give back to the community. So the way this works is you can advertise or you can send to customers via email that any customer that gets a service on Tuesday, for every service that's performed, the salon will give 1%, 5%, it depends on what your margin is, will give that percentage amount back to a local charity or organization. So every color, every haircut, customers are actually going to end up giving 5%, or the business in this case, will be giving 5% of the proceeds to a specific group. So how would you actually apply a Giving Tuesday? Or how would you create some sort of Giving Tuesday promotion at your salon? So let's work backwards. Let's go into shortcuts. So again, I'm putting together an email, and I'm going to say, on Tuesday, everybody that gets a haircut, you're actually going to be donating some amount to a charity. So I'll get out of PowerPoint again, back to shortcuts. Now, some of you may already have this discount or this promotion, but for those that don't, if we go to configuration and we return to the discounts button, Normally, you would give a discount to the customer for a service or a product. But if you're going to be giving discounts and perhaps even selling or giving away gift certificates for a charity or a group, you want to create a discount for that. So it's not any one of my existing ones. I'm going to create an entirely new discount. So I will call this charity slash donation. And I'm going to say the default is 100% off. Now notice, I am not going to allow this discount to be used on products or services. Instead, if the business is going to give a discount on something, it should be for a gift certificate. So in this case, this is a discount, charity slash donation, that can only be used for a gift certificate. So what happens? In the point of sale, if you're going to donate a gift certificate for a local homeless shelter or a women's shelter, or even to a local school, perhaps they have some parents that are low-income parents and they can't exactly have their whole family come in to get a haircut, Maybe you're going to donate that school or that charity a $25, a $50 gift card. So at the point of sale, you'll give that customer the gift certificate, that school or that organization the gift certificate. You'll see it's worth $25, it's worth $50. But when you apply this discount, shortcuts will understand, ah, the business is donating this amount. So then the customer can return later, perhaps with their family, and then they'll give you that gift card worth however much it was, and you'll just remove that at the point of sale. So the nice thing about this is at the end of the year, when you're running your reports, you can actually say this was the amount that went specifically to a charity or a donation. And in shortcuts reports, the recipient of that particular donation or charity gift certificate will be listed. So, of course, that looks really good on your taxes, but as far as a community goes, that is really helpful for your community members. So keep this in mind. Charities, donations, Giving Tuesday, things like this, 
is not just something that you can do in the holidays. This is something you can do year round. So this is one of the best and the easiest ways to track and ensure events. So let's jump back to our presentation. So I hope this is starting to give you an idea of some of the emails you can start to put together. But let's go to this next part. So we always want to think not just on Black Friday where the holidays uh, season, uh, shopping season really kicks off, but what are you going to do after Black Friday? What do you have planned? So let's actually do a promotion. So let's say on the email that you're about to send out, you're going to promote gift certificates. And this is always a hot thing to do around the holidays. And for this demonstration, we're going to go into shortcuts and we're going to set up a demonstration on if you have a customer that purchases a $100 gift card, then they'll get a free $20 gift card. So how does that work? Let's jump into shortcuts. So under setup, we're going to go to setup and we'll go down to our list of promotions. So I've already created the gift card promotion. So normally, if you had no promotion set up at the bottom of the screen, you would just press the new button. But in this case, I'm just going to go to the details for that. So the first thing you do is you give your promotion a name. Gift card promotion, it's very straightforward. But what are the specifics for it? So for the shortcut salon, we're saying from November through December, anybody that buys a $100 gift card will get a free $20 gift card. Notice this applies to anybody. You don't have to be a member of any sort of club. This is just a general promotion. On the right side, you can actually set a date range. So again, you can queue up a promotion ahead of time. So at your salon, at your spa, if you decided this is the promotion that I'm going to run in the first two weeks of December, then you can set a date range on the right side. Or you can even say it's only for specific hours, perhaps morning hours or evening hours, depending on your promotion. Or this is a promotion that's only good on Saturdays and Sundays. So these details depend on your actual business. But for my sake, it's a little bit more general. Whenever the business is open, November through December, this is our special promotion. So we'll go to the next window. On this window, on the top left, I tell shortcuts, this promotion applies to specific items in the sale. So notice we have a few other options here. If you visit our shortcuts webpage and you go to our learning center, we actually have a video series that gives you another 10 examples of other types of promotions that you can run. So if you want to run a promotion on buy a haircut and then purchase a bottle of shampoo and the shampoo will be for free, we'll show you how to set that up. Or if you buy two of one product and you get a third product half off, again, we'll have a video that walks you through how to set up that promotion. But in this case, we're saying a specific item in the sale. Gift certificates or gift cards are actually listed under sundry. So I'm not setting up a promotion against any service or any product. You're welcome to do that. So I tell shortcuts, if a customer purchases a gift certificate, open value, then they purchase another gift certificate of a different value, so that's open value and open value A, then what is the benefit? So at the bottom, I'll say the benefit is on the next page. Items purchased under this promotion. So shortcuts will say, okay, which one of these is going to receive the benefit? The benefit applies to the second item, the open value A in this case. And it's a maximum of one. And this will be 100% off. 
So if you're thinking of other promotions for the holidays, retail, soft goods, things like that, you can actually say, okay, during the month of December, if any customer purchases my t-shirts, my soft goods, my hats, my jewelry, that'll be 25% off. So this is where you set your percentage. But in this case, the gift certificate, the second gift certificate is 100% off. So how does that work in the point of sale? So in the point of sale, let's say a customer comes in, they're responding to my email, and I'll put in my test customer. So this customer will say the business is selling a gift certificate, and he wants the promotion, so he's going to get two of them, open value and open value A. So you notice right away, a discount is already ready to be applied to that open value A coupon. So I'll say the first one he's going to purchase is a $100 gift certificate. So the second one will be that $20 gift certificate. And because there's a promotion in play, Shortcuts will ask you, do you want me to apply the promotion for the new price? And if I say yes, then Shortcuts automatically removes that $20. So now I would collect the cash or the credit or the debit from the customer, and I would scan in the codes for these two gift certificates. So I'd scan in the first one, and then I'd scan in the second one that was complimentary for the client. And of course, once December is over, this promotion will disappear. So the next time a client wants to buy two different amounts worth of gift cards, they're going to have to pay full price for both of those gift cards. So let's jump back here. So that was actually a demonstration of something that you can promote in an email campaign and then set up in shortcuts so that Shortcuts automatically registers what is this promotion, when is it good for, and what specifically is it good for. And that's just one possible example. Again, if you go to our Shortcuts Learning Center and you watch our video series, we have other types of examples of promotions that you can set up. So you can have a unique promotion for every week from November all the way through Christmas that announces this is the special of this week, this is the special of this week, and the promotions and shortcuts will automatically roll into the corresponding special. Are there any questions on that? Let me bring up the control panel, and on the right side, I think everything's following so far so good. Okay. So I'll minimize this again. And again, I will make time to review any questions that you may have at the end of the presentation. So creating a gift certificate promotion, probably the most popular campaign that you could send out during the holidays. Just let customers know, hey, gift certificates are available all year round, but if you purchase a gift certificate during the holiday season, and you buy a $100 gift card, you're going to get a free $20 gift card. It's our way of saying thanks for being a loyal customer. So what do you have planned beyond Christmas? This is something else to consider. In the next few weeks, you're going to be super busy. It's enough that you have one campaign ready to go through the holidays. Perhaps you're going to queue this message up to go out during Thanksgiving week or perhaps immediately following Thanksgiving, but will you have another email ready to go through Christmas or even for the New Year's? If you don't, please consider it. The nice thing about working with shortcuts, and if you use GCAST specifically, you can actually use one of our templates. We have a number of templates for the holidays that you're welcome to use, and if in GCAST you use demographics and you use them very carefully. You can actually use that to tie the campaign specifically 
to certain customers or certain demographics. So let's actually go through that in GCAST right now. So this, I'm sure, is the portion that many of you were waiting for. So in GCAST, hopefully you're familiar with this setup in GCAST. If not, may I advise that you also follow with our second webinar, which is going to be in December. It's going to be looking at your year's worth of campaigns. And it's also going to be a little bit of a primer in case you haven't touched GCAST in a while because you have automatic campaigns going out and you just need a quick refresher. How do I set this up? How do I set that up? How do I set my send options or my demographics? The next webinar will be an excellent chance to get you caught up before the end of the year. So for right now, I've actually queued up a campaign. I went to our template library. I chose one of our holiday templates and I've already started the process. So I'm going to search one of my campaigns in progress. And on my list, I have my Happy Holidays from Shortcuts. So I'm going to go to this campaign. So this was the one I was working on. So I always make sure that I have a subject because of course, this is the very first thing that your customer sees when they receive an email. And it's kind of embarrassing but I do see some of the emails that our clients send out and every now and then some of them forget to put in a subject. So I'll get an email that says no subject and then it'll have some sort of really nice promotion or in some cases, a couple of the salons that we work with, they just won a prize or their team members won a prize and they just wanted to let everybody know they were so happy they had to get this news out. But the downside is if, if, if your email says no subject, the customers are going to think, oh, this is spam deleted before they even get to the nice news. So keep that in mind. Don't forget to add your subject. So I've used our template. I've uploaded a graphic. I've put in a message here, changed the logo. So in my email, I actually mention I have a special offer. So remember, you make your edits on the right side. So I say from now until the end of the year. If you buy a $100 gift certificate, you'll get a $20 gift card from us. So I mentioned that specifically in the campaign. I have a little logo, a little graphic for it, and I include my online booking links and as well as my social media. So at the very bottom, I'm going to save and continue. And I feel like I have to cough. Hopefully the microphone doesn't pick this up. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> Okay, I'm back. I just flipped the switch on my microphone. Hopefully that worked for you. So the send options. This is where you tell GCAST when the message should send out. Now, most holiday campaigns, the frequency is set to once only. And you say specifically, so when am I sending this? I'm going to send this next week. Let's say during the week of Thanksgiving or a little bit before Thanksgiving. So I'll set a date, November 19th in this case, and what time. So GCAST also lets you set the time the email goes out. The most popular campaigns actually send between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning, depending on your time zone. So just keep that in mind. This is the chance where most customers get a chance to check their personal emails, whether they're at school or whether they're at, they're at work. So 9 and 10, that's the golden hour. So when a customer gets the email, who does it say it's coming from? Well, shouldn't say it's coming from me. It should say it's coming from shortcuts. So at the very bottom, we'll save and continue. So I'm telling GCAST my holiday campaign, I want it to go out next Monday at 9 o'clock. <clears throat> then demographics come into play. 99 0.9% of every campaign that you send out will never use demographics. <coughs> the reason for that is because your send options pretty much control when the message should go out. If you leave demographics alone, then that means that every client on your email list will get a copy of the message. And that's usually fine for most promotions. 
But in this case, <clears throat> let's say I wanted to send an email that was targeting a very specific group of clients. So maybe my gift card promotion or maybe my uh, leader duo promotion is only going to go to specific people. This is one of the demographics you can use. On the very first pull down menu, the demographic I'm setting is the shortcut software USA Demographics. Everybody that's listening in, if you have Gcast, you also have access to this demographic, even if you're in Canada. The second bar that I'm choosing is called Demographics. And then the third one, I want to reach out to customers that have not been back to my salon in at least six months. So the third column, I'm going to say this email is based on the customer's last visit date. And I'll say their last visit date is before June 1st, 2018. So with just this demographic alone, GCAS will only send emails to those clients that have not visited me in six months. Now, immediately underneath that, I actually added a second demographic. And that demographic is, does the customer or does the client have a future appointment? And if the answer is no, send them a copy of this message. So why would I use the second demographic? What this filter is for is because some of your customers may do a lot of traveling or for some color services, perhaps the color services it will last two or three months. So you may not see customers for an entire season. So perhaps those customers actually booked their holiday visit and you don't want to send them an email or you don't want to send them some sort of coupon if they already have a future appointment. So I want to exclude those people. So just keep this in mind. These are just two potential demographics you can set. Let me eliminate the second one. And let's go to that first one. So that first one, if I wanted to reach out to customers that haven't been back in six months, this would be a demographic I could set. Let's look at it another way. Some of your staff members are going to be out, perhaps the first two weeks of December or the last two weeks of December, and you need to let their preferred clients know that they're not going to be available, so they need to reschedule right away with somebody else. So we actually have a demographic for that. So in the third column, we can actually say the client's preferred employee name. So in this case, if, let's say, Andy, one of the, the Shortcuts employees, is going to be out the first two weeks of December, and I only want to send an email to Andy's customers, to Andy's preferred customers, and let them know Andy's not going to be here, but we have a great staff, and let's have you reschedule, or let's have you schedule your next appointment with somebody else. This is how you would set that specific demographic. So it's very handy when somebody's coming in or going on holiday or going on break, and I've helped a few of our customers set this up when staff members are going on maternity. So just keep this in mind. So this is another potential demographic. But in this case, I'm going to eliminate. So I'm not going to use any demographics because I, just, I want every one of my customers to know I have a holiday promotion going on. So I'll save this one. And I'll just skip to the end. Status. So this is the fail safe. I've queued up a message. I want to make sure that I take a look at it. So that's when you would send a test. So you can always send a test to your coworkers or the rest of your staff just to make sure everybody's on board, everybody takes a look at the email and is happy with it. And if they are, that's when you would activate the campaign. So then GCAST will automatically send out my holiday email next Monday at nine o'clock. So if I have a moment, and I'm working on my campaigns. Once my Thanksgiving week promotion is ready, 
I can jump back into my template library. I can look at the Shortcuts USA template library, and I can decide, okay, I have one for the week of Thanksgiving. Am I going to put anything together for the holidays? So we do have a happy holiday template. Or am I going to focus on putting together a campaign for the new year? So we've got a number of different templates, different uh, sets of these. If you decide, well, I'm going to put something together that's a little bit more generic, that's a little bit uh, less seasonal, you can always go to our um, newsletter campaigns. Here we are. So our newsletters are a little bit more flexible. So we've got placeholder pictures that you can use for just about any type of announcement. So if you decide, I want something between Thanksgiving and Christmas, not too Christmassy. So you can always start by using one of the newsletter templates. So that's to give you a sense. You can set up shortcuts ahead of time with regards to your schedules, to your discounts, to your promotions. And you can work with Gcast to know whenever my customers receive campaigns, I'm setting all of that up ahead of time so that once GCAST knows to send them out, I can focus on the clients that are in the chair. So that takes us to the end of the presentation. So after today, after this presentation, you should now know how to configure your point of sale system to reflect your seasonal hours, whether you're adjusting your business hours or your staff schedules. This will synchronize online. If you're going to create a discount and you're going to announce that via email, make sure you configure a discount reason in shortcuts as well. So again, if you're going to announce something for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, make sure there's a corresponding discount in shortcuts. How to set up a promotion. So if you're going to do a special on gift cards, I gave you an example of how you would set that up in shortcuts. But we also have ways of synchronizing it for services. So if you get, buy a haircut, for example, and you'll get a free blow dry, that may be a promotion that you want to send up for the holidays. So we have about 10 different types of promotions and just examples of how to set them up on our learning center online. And of course, the last bit, queuing up a campaign for the following month. So if you get a chance, this week, before the hurricane of the holidays hits you, set up your email campaigns. At the very least, have one for Thanksgiving or Christmas. At the very least. If you get a chance, set up a campaign for November, December, and even the New Year's. And if you can get those three set up, and you have a chance, if it doesn't get too crazy, and you have a moment in December, we'll actually do another webinar, and we'll look forward to the other types of campaigns that you can set up for the rest of the year and how to set those up in GCAST. So now, remember, you can always visit our previous webinars in our webinar library, and that's at shortcuts.net slash webinars. And we're going to open up the floor to you. So let me bring up my control panel. And I have the chat window and the question window, both available. So if anybody has a question on anything we've covered this morning, we'll give you a few minutes. And if you have any suggestions, anything that you missed, please let me know. So on the right side, I have that available. Scrolling through, no, no questions on the right side. I'm going to just type it in. Any questions? We've got some attendees. April, Brittany, Chris, <laughs> any questions? Hopefully there, you were able to hear the audio on this one. I think I put everybody to sleep. All right. 
Well, thank you for your time. I'm going to make... <laughs> and Rosanna said, no, we're awake. Okay, thank you very much. But if you have any questions, go ahead and, and just let me know or if there's something we need to review. Otherwise, if you are more interested in GCAS and how to dig into the actual email program, we're going to focus a little bit more on that next month. But at the very minimum, Make sure you have at least one campaign ready for your holiday season. And the next month, we'll dig in a little deeper and we'll, we'll think about working on campaigns for the rest of the year. So thank you all for attending. I appreciate that you got up super early in the morning in some cases. And this presentation will be available on our Shortcuts webpage, uh, hopefully before the end of the business day. All right. Have a, a great holiday season if I don't see you again for the next presentation. And uh, don't work too hard because uh, we, still, we still will appreciate and need your business. Have a great season.